Amen, church. Open your Bible to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. This morning we are continuing with the message we started last Sunday. It was entitled, Two Things That Must Happen Before Jesus Christ Returns. Two things that must happen before Jesus Christ returns. And as we look at these two things, my brothers and my sisters, these are two signs that those of us as believers must look for prior to the return of Jesus. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1, the writing of Paul to the church at Thessalonica a church that was on tiptoe anticipation of the return of Jesus, so much so that Paul had to write them this letter of instruction and give them two undeniable signs that must come to pass before Jesus Christ returns to the earth. 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 1, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be ye troubled neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. That means the day of Christ is right now, close. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. That's the first sign. And, that means in addition to that, here's number two, that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshiped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. The Apostle Paul, who gave us by inspiration of the Holy Spirit most of the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, who gives us the advanced teachings of Jesus Christ, even after Christ has left the earth by the Spirit of Christ that was in him, the Apostle Paul, who excelled in Revelation, says, and we need to hear, that two things have got to happen before the coming of the Lord Jesus. Verse 3 again, look at verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The two things are in that one verse. First of all, there's going to be a great falling away. We told you last week that word actually means apostasy. Apostasy is a falling away or a defection from the truth. So before Christ comes, people are going to turn away from the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. They won't hear the truth. And what they will do instead is they're heaping to themselves, teachers having itching ears. They will listen to things that gratify the flesh rather than fortify the spirit. They'll defect from the truth. And not only that, they will actually come to the place where they hate those who tell the truth. That's the way it's going to be before he comes. Falling away apostasy means a revolt, a rebellion. Multitudes, millions from all over the world will rebel and revolt against the truth of God. And not only the truth of God, they will rebel and revolt against God. Then within the body of Christ, because the body of Christ will not be exempt 
from this apostasy because even in the body of Christ, the church of Jesus Christ, many will turn away from the church of Jesus Christ. Many will fall away. Again, look at verse 3 in your Bible again. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And brothers and sisters, we are already in this sign right now. Falling away. Apostasy. Leaving an assigned post. That's number one. And then here's number two, which is what we want to talk about today. And that man of sin be revealed. This is what we want to talk about today. The son of perdition. Number one, apostasy. Number two, the man of sin will be revealed. He is the son of perdition. Now, the man of sin, the son of perdition, is the Antichrist. The Antichrist. The Antichrist is actually a man who will appear in the end times. He will be Satan's instrument. He is a man that is filled with Satan's spirit. And the Bible says that this man will be revealed, and the word revealed is so important, he'll be revealed when the end time or the time of the return of Christ is near. He will be revealed. Now, you won't be able to turn on television or radio or read in a newspaper or some other kind of printed material. The Antichrist is here because people in the world are blind. That's why this scripture is so important because it says that the Antichrist, that man of sin, will be revealed. I believe, brothers and sisters, that when he hits the scene by the Spirit of God, those of us who are saved will know in our spirit man. I believe God's gonna let us know. You won't hear a news flash on breaking news on CNN or no other network. The Antichrist is here. They just think he's another politician, another smart individual that's come on the scene, another charismatic person whom people are following. But those of us who are saved and have the spirit of Christ, this knowledge of who he is will be revealed unto us by revelation knowledge. Eyes have not seen, ears haven't heard, haven't even entered into the mind of man. Some of the things that God has prepared for us who love him, but God reveals things to us by his spirit. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And when he is come, he will reveal, he'll make truth known unto us. Not only will he make truth known unto us, Jesus said he will even teach us and tell us things that are even yet to come. When the Antichrist hits the scene, and many people believe that he will not be an American, he'll probably be somewhere out of Europe, but when he hits the scene, we will know that he has come, and when he comes, that's the last sign. Now, when we, when we discern in our spirit that the Antichrist is on the scene, in that the Bible talks about Jesus' return to the earth will be soon after that, then we know that the rapture must really be at hand when we see this Antichrist figure appear. I hope you're hearing me today. This will be revealed. It will, you will be, it will be made known unto you by the Spirit of God. What do we know about him? Verse 4, look at it in your Bible. We want to be very biblical this morning. What do we know about the Antichrist? Look at verse 4. Verse 4 says, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. The Antichrist will oppose God. You know, the Bible talks about two Christ. The Bible actually talks about two Christ. It talks about Jesus the Christ. And then the Bible talks about the Antichrist. Let me tell you, Satan is a counterfeiter. Satan 
likes to try to copy the things of God because we learn about his fall that Satan wanted to be God. He wants to be God. He said, I'm going to exalt myself above God. Pride was in him. He was perfect the day he was made, the Bible said, but iniquity and pride in him caused himself to be uh, risen up. I'm talking about the devil now. So therefore, there's a Christ, there's Jesus the Christ, and then there is what the Bible calls the Antichrist. The devil is so jealous of God, he wants to try to duplicate what God has done. So therefore, since God had a son in the earth named Jesus the Christ, Satan is going to incarnate himself in a man in the last days to try to copy Jesus, and this man will be the Antichrist. The word anti means opposition. He's going to be opposed to God. He's going to be against God. And he's going to be against all that God stands for in the earth. The Antichrist is against God and Christ. And again, Satan has always wanted the worship that is due to God. I want you to tell you something, and I'm not going to get off the subject, but that's why the area of music is so impactful and so important because music was designed to worship God. And so the main thing the enemy wants to do is to take the realm of music because in the realm of music, music is very seductive, very impressive on people's spirits. So that's why a whole generation just about has been beguiled by the devil through something as simple but as important as music. He wants worship. Satan wants worship. That's why he told Jesus, he said, listen, look at all the kingdoms of the world. If you would just bow down, listen to this, and worship me, I'll give it all to you. That's why so many people who are in the world today have so many material things. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with material things, but you find out that so many people's material things have them. And it's at the point where people begin to worship things rather than the Creator. I'm preaching good by the Holy Ghost. So therefore, Satan also tries to duplicate and imitate God because God has the spirit of Christ in the earth today. Now I'm going to preach next week about the spirit of Antichrist because again, there is a counterfeit spirit that the devil has come up with. And this is very important. I hope you'll hear next week. Because a whole lot of saints, even as John wrote, a whole lot of saints have been beguiled by the spirit of Antichrist. There is the spirit of Antichrist and there is the spirit of Christ again the enemy wants to counterfeit and duplicate what God has done. So God has the Holy Spirit in the earth. And now, even before the Antichrist ever hits the scene, the spirit of Antichrist is already at work in the earth. That's why we got to be careful. I want you to hear me. We don't like hard and fast lines. We don't like, we don't like hot, cold left, right, right, wrong. We like some kind of medium place. I want to tell you, there is no middle ground. Anything that's going on in the earth today is either happening by the spirit of Christ or the spirit of Antichrist. If it's not the spirit of Christ, it's the spirit of Antichrist. And that's why we have the word of God. Many years ago, Elder Jerry Harris made a statement that I'll never forget. and It stuck with me down through the years. He says, you can want something so bad that you can actually convince yourself in your spirit that it's right. That's why you got to be careful. That's why you got to stand in the word of God. That's why you got to hear the word of God. The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even the divine son of soul and spirits and joints and marrow. The word is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. 
there are some things that we think, certain things that we want, that we, that we embrace that is really anti-Christ. But because we want it, we like it, we think it, we feel it, and the feelings are so dangerous, we come to a point where we embrace it, and the devil has no new tricks from the book of Genesis even unto the day, as he did with Adam and Eve. He mixes a little bit of truth with a whole lot of lie to beguile you out of your place in God so he can in turn wind up doing you damage. So we're going to talk about next week the spirit of Antichrist that's already in the world. Are you hearing me? So, the Antichrist, the person, is going to hit the scene. He's the man of sin. He's the lawless one. If you take every wicked person that's ever been on this planet, like Hitler, Stalin, Mussolini, any of these dictators that's been on the earth, if you wrap all of them up in one person, that person still will not be as evil as the Antichrist. A whole lot of people have called a whole lot of people the Antichrist, and I'm going to tell you, they might have worked in an Antichrist spirit, but they were not the Antichrist. But we are in an age now that the confusion that we see on a worldwide basis, hear me, please hear me, is just a setup for this charismatic figure to rise up somewhere it is said in the European theater to rise up and seemingly have all the answers and here's what he's going to do he is going to take control of the whole world and the good news is the Bible says in your, in your lesson you read last night that he that lets will continue to let until he is taken out of the way. Now, the word let in that scripture is really kind of hard to understand because what it's saying is when it says let, what it's really talking about is hinder. The one that's hindering the spirit of Antichrist in the earth right now from totally taking over is he, the Holy Spirit. He's hindering the work of the Antichrist. But guess what? Brothers and sisters, when the trumpet sounds and we get up out of here, Holy Spirit is going with us. And Holy Spirit, who has been hindering or, or preventing the Antichrist spirit from taking over, will be out of the way. Are you hearing me? It's going to be sad, sad, sad for people who are left behind. I think we ought to take about 10 seconds in your car. Don't blow your horn, but in your, sec in your car, take about 10 seconds. If you know you're saved beyond the shadow of a doubt, lift your hands and give God praise right now. Now here's what he's going to do. And, I, and this is all in scripture. He's going to take control of about three nations and from there he's going to take control of the whole world. And here's what he's going to do. Now hear me real good. He's going to make it so you're going to have to have an actual license. You're going to have to have a license to live. How's he going to do that? Because he is going to take control of the economy. In other words, you're going to have to receive a mark in your hand or your forehead so that you will be able to buy or sell. The people who are left here, if they're going to get something to eat, and that's what it comes down to, they're going to have to take a mark. And let me tell you something. There, there are some of us here who have had some days of hunger, but some of us have really never had deep hunger for a long period of time. When you are hungry, I'm talking about for food, you'll just about do anything. You'll just about eat anything. And there are going to be a whole lot of people that's going to be starving and rather than starve to death, they're going to take the mark of the beast. Now, a whole lot of folk like to contemporize and come up with different things. They said, well, the mark is going to be a chip. It's going to be a computer chip. I heard the other day somebody said that COVID 
C-O-V-I-D stands for Certification of Vaccination ID. That the vaccination for COVID is going to be the mark. Listen, I'm not going to speculate on any theories. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says it's going to be a mark. Now, those of us who are here, we can't even begin to rationalize or taking a mark but the point I'm making is you haven't come to the place where you are hungry enough to do it. If you got hungry enough where you hadn't eaten, that's why I thank God we're going to be out of here. But there are folks that's going to be here that would gladly take the mark in their head and in their hand rather than stand for Jesus, rather than be warned by the two witnesses and the 144,000 that's going to be preaching in the earth because that is when the scripture is going to be fulfilled that this gospel is going to have to be preached throughout the whole world that's a that's a tribulation scripture actually the gospel is going to have to be preached throughout the whole world before the end can come the two witnesses are going to preach the gospel the gospel is going to be everywhere over the world during the tribulation but guess what it's going to be hard 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 to be saved some folk will have to give up their lives if they name the name of christ if they don't take the mark of the beast. So I'm not going to speculate about no computer chip, about no vaccination. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says it's going to be a mark. So somehow, I don't know whether it's going to be tattooed on people's heads and hands. I don't know how it's going to be done, but they're going to have to receive a mark to be able to buy and sell. Now, buying and selling talks about the economy. Now please understand, because we get caught up on stuff that people, that wickedness in high places wants us to fight about on the earth, and we will hear the scripture, we'll hear the truth, but we won't do the truth. We'll say, yeah, that's the truth. All right, the truth says, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. That's what the scripture says. But against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high or heavenly or spiritual places. That's where the problem is. The problem is not with one another, but the enemy is so smart, he will throw us meat, he'll throw us bait to argue over. And what we don't even understand while we're arguing with one another is we don't understand that it's much deeper than the bait they throw us. Because let me tell you what it's all about. And don't forget this, it's all about money. It's all about money. This Antichrist is going to take over the economy himself because it's all about money. Now, I'm going to close, but I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. And, and, and stop quoting the Bible and start believing the Bible. The Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil that's what the that's what the bible said now start believing that the base of all the problems we have today is the love of money the antichrist spirit the antichrist wants to come and control the world economy so when you start hearing about one world currency, one world economy, one world this, new order this, new order that, it's all about money. It's all about love of money. And see, a lot of times we, we, are, we, we, are, we are so carnal that the enemy can keep us divided with bait he throws us to argue over. And all the time, the people who are in this elite society that's really running things in the earth, throwing us bait to grab, they are actually grabbing the money. I want to tell you something. Don't you think that somebody somewhere has had some kind of epiphany and now all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they want to take down flags and take down monuments. No, they ain't had no epiphany. It's all about money. That's what it's all about. We argue over flags and statues. They'll do anything that is expedient for them to continue the economy. That is why there is such an emphasis on getting the economy open. Because it's all 
about money. And we don't even think on that level. We think on a base, carnal, worldly mindset. I tell you what, next time, and I close, next time you fly on an airplane and you go somewhere in a plane, a jet, just think, somewhere there's a man that owns the jet. You flying on it, but somewhere there's a man that owns it. See, we don't think about that. Next time you stay in a nice plus hotel and you feel like you're really big balling, please understand, somewhere there's a man that owns the hotel. Next time you stay at a nice resort, and there's nothing wrong with staying at a nice hotel, nothing wrong with staying, I just want you to raise your conscience a little higher. Uh, next time you stay at a resort, there's somebody that actually owns the resort. These are super rich. We can't even begin to, we can't even begin to conceptualize what life is like. Next time you go on that cruise, yeah, and go on a cruise. Nothing wrong with going on a cruise, but take a moment and think, somebody owns this ship. Next time you go to the amusement park, next time you go to Disney World, there was a Mr. Disney. And they live on a level that we can't even begin to comprehend. We can't even begin to fathom. And they will do something like give you a stimulus check while billionaires get millions of dollars that you never know nothing about. Because the love of money, and praise God, I was glad to get my check. I hope I get another one. Praise God. I hope they send me another one. But guess what? I got an amen on that one. But guess what? There's a millionaire somewhere that's getting millions. Because the money ain't worth nothing. No way. They're just making it, printing it. And while they're printing it, they're forgetting to make some coins. That's why you go places now and they say, please, we don't have no coins. Please try to have exact change. My God, I want to tell them if you can make, you can make dollar bills, you can make some pennies. I'm talking truth to you now. I'm spitting truth to you. So this Antichrist is going to all be about the money. So here's what he's going to do. You read your homework. So he's going to make a covenant with Israel. He's going to say, Israel, I'm going to protect you from the Arab enemies that's all around you. I'm going to protect you. But then while they are at peace, he's going to break covenant and violate the temple. The Antichrist will actually go into the Jewish temple and set up a statue of himself that he will won't worship. Look at verse 4 in the text, and we're just about ready to go home. Verse 4 says, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that, that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. What I'm going to show you next week by the Spirit of God is we got to be careful we don't allow the spirit of Antichrist to be reigning in us. And it's a subtle spirit because what the devil wants to do is he wants to reign in your heart. See, your body is the temple. That's the revelation from him. Not just a temple over in Jerusalem. He wants the spirit of Antichrist to be in your heart. And again, John wrote his warning to Christians about the spirit of Antichrist. Some of us operate in the spirit of Antichrist don't even realize it. How can you say that? Again, because if it's not Christ, it's Antichrist. If it's not Christ, it's Antichrist. I'm going to say that for you. If it's not Christ, it's Antichrist. If it's not Christ, it is Antichrist. See, 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 the devil will do anything but confess that Jesus is Lord. How do you know? How do you know when somebody is really saved? Because they confess that Jesus is Lord. Now, a whole lot of people will say Jesus. A whole lot of people will say God whole lot of people go through a lot of a lot of motions religious motions but the difference is nobody will call Jesus Lord by the spirit of the devil and see that's what gets you saved saying Jesus is Lord are you still here you're going home so he wants to get in the temple he wants to get in your in your own in your temple but Let's go back to Israel. After three and a half years, he's going to come against Israel. Watch this. He's going to come against Israel with armies.
He's going to flip the script. He's going to make a covenant and then break it. But guess what? Here comes the good part. After he breaks the covenant with Israel and then flips the script and starts fighting against Israel and those other countries with him, they're going to look up and they're going to see one coming on a white horse. Praise God, help me not to get happy here. There's going to be one coming on a white horse. And in a real place on the earth, that's why I try to tell you, the Bible does not confirm history. History actually confirms the Bible. There's a real place in Israel called the Valley of Armageddon. And there's going to be a great war in that place. You can read about it in Revelation 16, 16. The Antichrist in that place will lead the armies of the world to fight against Jesus Christ. Are you ready for this? But Jesus Christ is going to destroy all the armies of the world with just the breath out of his mouth. You know what that looks like? All those armies going to be shooting missiles and all that kind of stuff. And Jesus is going to say, All right, let's read it. We out of here. Revelation 19. Turn there. Some of you read your homework. Let me read just a little of this. Not going to read much. Revelation 19, verse 11. Oh, I feel like shouting. Aren't you glad when you're on the winning team? Oh, my God. It's good for you on the winning team. Huh? Somebody shout if you say, so I'm on the winning team. My Lord, back in the day, when they'd have basketball games, you remember Marcelette, we had that good basketball team at Kinston High. We start telling folk to come from out of town, especially Goldsboro, we fight them. We say, we're going to whoop y'all tonight. Guess what? We ain't going on the floor. Ain't had a basketball. But guess what? We were with the winning team. I want somebody to shout right now because you are with the winning team. And guess what? You've already read the end of the story. You already know who's going to win. That's why the old cliche is true. You don't have to wait till the battle is over. My God. You could go ahead on and shout right now. Somebody shout in your car right now. I got a quick Revelation 19, 11. Here it is. And I saw heaven open. Glory to God. Help me here, Holy Ghost. And behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had, he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name... It's called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Verse 15, this is why the devil don't want you to get in the Word. This is why the devil keeps you from reading your Bible. Because the Bible is the power of God. The Word is God. Verse 15 said, and out of his mouth, Goeth a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. He, he, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, Oh my God, King of Kings. And Lord 
of Lords. What's going to happen to the Antichrist? What's going to happen to the devil? Revelations chapter 20. Look at it in your own Bible. Revelations chapter 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon. Are you here? That old serpent which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed for a season. Let me tell you something my brothers and my sisters when Jesus comes down out the sky he's not going to leave his bride in heaven he's going to bring the bride with him somebody say with me I'm coming back with him we're going to come down out of the heavens with him if we come with him that means we won't hear we won't hear because we've been already been caught up to meet him in the sky but guess what when he comes back we're going to reign with him for 1,000 years are you hearing me for 1,000 years heaven will come to earth the government of God will be upon the earth and my Bible says that the government shall be on his shoulders I'm I'm so glad. I'm glad about it. I said I'm glad about it. No more Republicans, no more Democrats. The government will be on his shoulders. Every head is bowed. Every eyes closed. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that you have forewarned us. Thank you you have forearmed us. That we don't have to live afraid in this day. Father, we are looking unto the hills. We know in Bible days that people thought you dwelt in the mountains. We know you dwell in high places. So we look unto the hills, not a natural hill, but we look unto you. We look unto the hills from which cometh our help. All our help comes from you. Help us, God. Holy Ghost, help us to see the truth, to know the truth. And then most of all, to walk in the truth. For truly, Father, we know from your word that you are soon to come. Help us through your Holy Spirit to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in your work. Help us, Lord, to possess our souls with patience. Help us to endure hardness as a good soldier. And most of all, Father, help us to set our affection on things above. Help us not to get entangled with things in this earth. Help us to see and know the truth. Anoint our eyes with our sound that we may see. Open our eyes. Let the scales fall off our eyes and we rebuke the very spirit of antichrist thank you father that we don't have to be afraid because your word says greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world thank you father that holy spirit in us is greater than anything that could come against us we love you today and we love your appearing we love your appearing we fall in out of love with this world and we beginning to love you more and love you better and love you right father we don't want to turn up we want to go up we want to go up with you 
I pray now, God, that everyone under the sound of my voice, if they haven't done it, will make Jesus Lord of their lives. And Father, I pray that if they have done it, I pray that we would worship you in spirit and in truth. Because you are looking for someone to worship you just like that. We love you, God. We bless you. We praise you. In your car, right where you are, won't you just lift your hands in your car? Open your mouth. Nobody in there but you and those that came with you. Won't you thank God for he's already worked out a plan. God knows how to deliver the righteous. He knows how. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody near, tell them to hold of God's unchanging hand. Because Jesus is soon to come. Now may the grace of God, communion of the Holy Spirit, the love and the peace and the power of God rest, rule, and abide with you all. This is my prayer. In that name that's above every name, in that name of that soon coming King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God, all that agree, would you say amen? amen. Blow those horns, blow those trumpets like blow those trumpets.